right, we really need to get him back in, guys. Four thousand dollar tag. One twenty-two. That's a nice fish. That is a good fish. Look at him, on it. Oh my God! You ripper! Sacrifice my own blood for everyone. In there. All right. And then I'll just guide him in. He's a nice. That is a nice bluefin. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Well done, mate. We hit the open road, heading along the south coast to the small town of Bermagui. Welcome to Bermagui. We brought Sean Tracy along who's tagging southern bluefin tuna as part of his research. Now, Sean, we've done a bit of tagging in the past. What's the deal with your tagging? Give us a rundown. So what we're looking at doing now is using satellite tags to look at the post-release survival of yep. uh, southern bluefin tuna. And with those tags, we can also get a lot of information about their movement up and down and around the coast. OK, so how are we going to do this? How are we going to get these tags in and how do they work? We'll go out, um, we've got the tagging poles, we bring the fish on, onto the boat, uh, we put the tag in and then we turn the fish around as quick as possible and get it back in the water. Well, we're 40 miles out, we had the ocean to ourselves and it's now like a car park. It's amazing how it's changed out here now that, you know, in the old days you'd come out and no one to tell anyone nothing, keep it quiet, don't say anything. Now you come out, one of the guys found a few bluefin, and I reckon everyone's found them now. All we need to do is catch one, Sean. We do. We do, we do, we need to catch one. Now, Sean, I don't know how you guys do it down in Tassie, I haven't been down there for years. Our basic plan is up here, is we're trolling around, we've got the gear out, got the laser pros down, and got a skirt out as well, so we've got a mix. We've got a bucket of cubes ready to go. The minute we find those fish, we start cubing and try and get them up, and then it's hopefully hold them at the boat. But as you can see, there's a pile of boats back there, and hopefully we can find the school around, well, hopefully we find our own school off them a bit, troll through there, get him on, and then it's game on, and then, then it's straight over here, mate, then it's time for the tags. Yep, that uh, sounds good. Yeah, well, that's pretty similar to how we do it in Tassie, but we don't get to do the cubing, because we've got a few issues with seals that that uh, show quite an interest in the yeah, in bait if seals, we start throwing it over the side. Yeah, so. the seals are becoming a real issue down there now, aren't they? I don't think people realise they eat the tuna. Don't they eat 100 kilo tuna and stuff? Yeah, they do now. They've, they've sort of learnt over the last sort of five to 10 years and they've got more and more brave and they'll come in and yeah, they'll have a go at a big fish as well. As soon as they get so. tired, they'll let, you know, as soon as it wears down a bit, they're into it. Yep. yep. Now this is technology. You better run us through this tag so people have an idea because you look at that and it could come from Mars or something, that thing. Yeah, right. So down this end we've got the anchor, so this basically is what's inserted into the fish. Now obviously some people are a bit concerned, like you're sticking this into a fish, it's, you know, there are some people are complaining about it, but I suppose the tech, what we're learning from one fish is so vital to the whole population, isn't it? Because you, you don't just put the one in now, do you? You put two in to try and minimise the, um, the impact on the fish, I suppose you could say. Yeah, well there's, there's a bit of, bit of a debate on that, whether you put the one anchor in or the two. Basically the idea of having the second anchor in is it pins the tag into the body of the fish. Yep. Um, otherwise, you know, these things swim around pretty fast and as they're swimming, the tag basically bores the, uh, the, the first anchor point. Oh. So that you, you probably end up with more damage by just having the single anchor than putting that second hole in. And it really is like a piercing at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, for them, just a, just a bit more hanging off their ear, I suppose you could say. Yeah, that's right. Well, we just got a bite. Hit the one skirt we had out, ironically, out of the whole spread. And I don't think it's the right stuff. Staying down deep. Here he comes up. I'd say he's an Albie, a little bit of colour there. And it's an albacore. Mind you, at least it's... At least it's better than nothing. We're on the cold side, we came down, we moved down on the other side, the break, and we came down and found there was a bit more bird life, and there'll be bluefin here somewhere. At least there's albacore in here. Now the only problem is, this isn't what Sean wants. Bring it on board, we'll do the bloods. Ah, there we go, we can still do the blood. Yeah, the 
There we go. Let's drop him down on the. There we go, buddy. Should so run him across the tape there. Sorry. Roll on the tape. On the tape, so we measure him. So what we'll do is put the hand over the eye, like so. That means he relaxes a little bit more. What he's doing then is putting the putting it in down in on the lateral line, which is a bit of blood in there. And then once we find out what we're doing is trying to work out the stress levels on the fish. It's good to go. Yep. Let this little guy go then. So I'll let him go. He can swim off. There we go, buddy. Beautiful. Well, I'll tell you what, Shorto. We've worked hard for this one. If I don't fall over in the process. We sat on shore waiting for this wind to calm down. We've finally come out here. We've been out here, what, eight, nine hours now? And we've got one albacore. It's been a slow day, but it sounds like all the boats have been the same, so oh. not just us. You know what, when you did that little lactose testing on that fish and it turned out the albacore had no stress at all, tell you what, if you give me a pin prick and test, my lactose level will be going through the roof. We can arrange that. One fish, that's all we want. Well, actually, we didn't want one fish, we wanted one big fish. Oh. But all we can do now is just hope this weather calms down and we can get back out and do it again. At least we can upgrade from an albacore. Can't go downhill. It'd be nice. It'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for fish facts, thanks to the complete angler. The albacore is the chicken of the sea, found right around the world in cooler waters. In Australia, they're prolific from New South Wales right around to Western Australia. Growing to a max of around 30 kilos, unfortunately most fish encountered around that 10 to 15 kilo mark. Now, the identifying part for an albacore is their pectoral fins, which are extended almost down the entire length of their body. You cannot miss them. They're found in large schools and they spend a lot of the time at the depths. So you catch them cubing, jigging, and of course trolling works as well. It's time for our destination profile for the tough Mitsubishi Triton. Bermagui is one of Australia's most famous fishing towns. Found some five hours south of Sydney or eight hours from Melbourne, it offers world-class offshore fishing. Zane Gray put the destination on the map when he fished it decades ago, but today it is a trailer boat mecca. It is home to record-sized yellowfin and bluefin tuna, which can weigh more than 100 kilos, as well as huge striped marlin and even swordfish. The great thing about Bermagui is that it has a safe harbour that is accessible in almost any conditions. And that coupled with deep water found close to shore makes it one of the best trailer boat game fishing destinations in the country. Remember to reel in the tough and reliable turbo diesel Triton at your local Mitsubishi dealer today. A couple of days of bad weather saw us stuck on shore. Then finally, the weather came good and we headed out at daybreak in search of the elusive bluefin. There we go, Stubble. Keep going, Al. Here you go. Oh, he's just got on the popper. Oh, my God. You ripper. Right, just watch your line on mine. Just, just watch those two. No, you over? You're over. That, is that right? Just slow down. Hang on. Just wind, start winding them up. I'm ready when you guys are. Okay, we'll bring him up then. We worked so hard for this. It's a bit bigger than I thought. Ugh. Okay. Uh, this is insane. Have a look at this. We've worked hard, I tell you, Sean. We've worked hard for these ones. He's got that, and you can see the tag just going in here. I'm holding him down for you. Beautiful. He's locked it in. Remember what we were saying? It's got two points on it. Now, see if you can see there. Pro Vic's fighting the next one in the background. This is chaos. <laughs> it's unreal. And this is what it's all about. It's hours of nothing, minutes of mayhem. Ready to go, guys. Rodeo. You want to put him in? Yep, that's all right. Look at this. He's got a pole. Oh, my God. Have a look at this. He's got a set tag going in. He's going to feed it for a sec. Sorry, mate. I'll come here. 
<laughs> That's what we wanted, Vic! That is it! Oh, they're blowing up all over the place. This is it, we've been going for hours. Oh, this is it, we've been going for hours. We've been looking and looking. We've been working so hard. And I tell you, all of a sudden, we're sitting there going, oh, we've got to go home. We've got to go home. It's my birthday. Got to go home. And all of a sudden, ah, ah, everything goes off. Oh, awesome. Well, as soon as we hooked up, we had a double on. We've still got one here. We've just put one back in the water. Vic got the popper, got the halco, the big rooster, cast it out. Bloop, bloop, boom, got him on. At the back of the boat, oh, they're just right there. All right, I'm ready to go, More guys. Clearly. Okay. Look at them just swimming around it. Look at them in the, look at them in the water. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the one we're on for the tagging. Okay. Just bottom lip if you can. Right. Oh, nice work, Al. Woohoo! That is a good fish. That's a Halco rooster popper. So okay, first of all, we're just going to measure the length. Okay, you're up at this end, so you're... 15, say 122. 122, that's a nice fish. That is a good fish. We'll take a blood sample. All right, we really need to get him back yep. in, guys, because yep. it's a $4,000 tag. Okay, can I, you're right. I'm pulling the camera. You're right to put him in. Uh, I need someone to lift the head. Okay, Vic can lift the head. That's on, hopefully. When you're ready. Yep. Go. He's oh, straight off. He's off. Oh, he's kicking that boy. Well done. How good is this? Woohoo! 45 nautical miles. High five for that see. one. High five for that. On the popper, on the deep divers, on the laser pros. We've done it. Miles out to sea, we've pulled it off. Woohoo! As soon as we tagged and released our second bluefin, Vic wasted no time in hooking up again. And even Sean got one. I tell you what, as you can see, it's a bit of chaos here. Vic was straight into it. Put the popper out there. How good is the Shimano gear, Al? I'm just loving it. That's a curve on it. This is what it's all about. We've done days of working hard and we're struggling. We're just about in tears, you know. And then all of a sudden, Go it goes, on. quick release for that one. So he's out of the way. And now we're straight on to the next one. Better boating tips for Helen Marine. When running offshore, always tell someone of your plans. Keep in contact via radio or satellite phone. Always monitor your fuel consumption. Nobody wants to run out. Check out hella.com.au to check out the latest marine catalogue. Environmental tip, thanks to Club Marine, Australia's largest insurer of pleasure craft. Satellite tagging of bluefin has produced some really interesting results, but most importantly, that they're surviving catch and release. And what we found is that if you look after them, they do survive. So don't drop them on the deck, get the fish up, look after it, tag it, get it back in the water quickly, that way it'll survive. Now Sean, tell me about your research. It looks like hard work. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough job, Al, but someone's going to do it. Look at that, that's a beautiful fish. You can just hold him there now, right? That's a nice fish. Must be close, 35, maybe crack 40 probably. They're fat little guys. Oh, that's just magic. Good on the heavy tackle, we can really give it to them. That's why we're fishing heavy, so we can bring these guys up fast, get them in, get the tags in, which we've been doing, and get them back out. You want to trace him there, you reckon? But I tell you what, woohoo! I can tell I'm all over the place, I'm so excited. You bring him in. Let's bring him in. We're going to do the blood on this one? Yep, absolutely. Oh, there you go. You're right to grab the gills there as well, and I'll go. Oh. There we go. 26.08. Alrighty, mate, what are we doing now? We've done it, we've caught the fish. Yep, we've got our two tags in, but we can still keep going and keep taking the blood, just to look at the stress levels related to the, how long we're taking to bring them up to the boat. Ah, so yeah. we're just checking on that as well, okay. And we've got Vic's on all the, uh, his data boy yeah, for the day. Yeah, Vic's, Vic's data boy for the day. So now, with this blood, what are we doing with that blood? So we can measure the lactate levels, so basically how, how exhausted the fish was. We're going to look at glucose, so the energy it used, and also cortisol levels, which is a, an indicator of stress. Here's my finger. Test me. I'll sacrifice my own blood for everyone. It can be Pin arranged me. now. Let's do Pin it. Me. 
could be your birthday present, Al. Yeah. <laughs> Al's birthday today, everybody. Happy, Happy birthday, Al! <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bluefin day. All right, Al, so we've uh, just measured the stress out of those three fish we've landed. The most stressed fish had a lactate level of about 10. Oh, so now, so people understand, a lactate level, that's not just stress, is it? That's exertion, is that? Yeah, that's exactly technical? right. It's like, it's like lactic acid build up when you start running. Okay, mate, let's see how I go against these fish. Can I get a lactate of higher than 10? Okay, well, you realise that means I need a blood sample from you? Yeah, it's all right, no big knives. Keep away, Vic. No big knives or anything, is it? Just All right, and I'm, I'm not doing it. It's on you. Here we go. Yowzers. If you squeeze your finger, it comes out oh, a lot wow. easier. That's got it there. Now. All right, so we'll put your blood onto the uh, lactate meter. Wait for the, and there we go. Oh, is that all it is? Six, 60 seconds and we'll know the answer. Will I be more than the fish? What, what was it? Are we there? All Tell right, me. the results through now, 4.8. Got beaten by fish. Well, that means you're a lot more relaxed than the fish. I'll tell you what, my stress levels would have been a bit higher before we hooked up. Once we hooked up, then it was all good. Glad we could make you relax for your birthday, yeah? 4.8 on my birthday. Woohoo! Happy with our success at Bermagiri, we headed for home. But on the way, we got a call from Corey Young from Club Marine, who said the tuna was starting to bite a bit further north, Jarvis Bay. Work him up. You just don't know what it is, you bring it up like that. You know, we're way out here, I don't know, 40 miles or something at the moment. And we have got, for the lucky draw, Albie by the look, oh, nice Albie. Swing under here. Now that is a nice albacore, mate. Nice fish, Al. Happy days. It's not a good, a bad start. We've only been fishing for 20 minutes. The rain's eased off for five. Looking good. One down. Good Let's start. Something bigger. Bluefin. Oh, yeah. Coming up, we finally land a big bluefin. And boy, are we pleased. That <laughs> is a nice bluefin. <laughs> it's time for Fish Like the Pros with the Complete Angler, who've been helping people fish since 1967. Now, catching bluefin tuna, the best way to find them and to hook up is on the troll. But the trick is, don't stop, as the minute you get a bite, keep going forward, and that way you'll turn a single hook up into a multiple hook up. And remember, for all the latest and greatest on what's happening on the water, drop into the Complete Angler. First one, pick it up, Corey. I'm gonna tell you what to do, Corey, so start now. Double hook up! <laughs> and just start winding those other. Come back. Can you come back? Ooh. He's running. He's running. It's all the chaos when you hook up. As you saw, we had a great double hook up. My laser pro is still out there somewhere. You can start to see it's a closing stage. You're getting that circles. This is where it gets really hard. When you're on the rod. <laughs> Ease him up nice and gently for me. What we want to do is we want to pinch it up nice and slow. Just get a couple of wines so you're at the tip at and the ease tip. your drag down. And what we want to do is... Watch your spot, watch your spot. Walk around, walk around. Bring him back the other way. Other way, swing around, that's it. Lift him up. That's it. What you want to do is, you're probably better without gloves because you can just pinch it and then I'll just guide him in. He's a nice fish, this one. Oh. That is what we're all about. That is a nice bluefin. 
Thanks, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, Ed. Well, mate, we got you one. We promised it. We got you a, a damn good bluefin. How did that feel? Oh, fantastic. It's uh, probably the biggest one that I've ever caught by far. It's uh, sensational. You said earlier today, earlier this morning, we'd get one, and you put us on the spot. Turn that head around. I tell you what, persistence, it pays off, and you end up with an awesome fish like this. You bloody ripper, mate. Very well happy, Al. Thanks, mate. Club Marine's tips of the week. Firstly, when the tuna are on, drop everything and go. Secondly, troll to find the fish. And finally, when you find them and you hook up, throw some pillies in and get those fish fired up.